Um, I'll speak quite briefly really about my own efforts with my undergraduate students in encouraging them to engage with existing numeric data. Um, as Jennifer said, I teach in the School of Education. Um, we take students from a, a vast range of different backgrounds, but one thing that many of them have in common is um, a limited engagement with statistics or even very basic numerical um, analysis. So I really just want to give you a few examples of how I try to engage students in, in this way. Um, this primarily relates to my undergraduate students. It also has some um, links with what goes on at postgraduate level. Many of the students that I teach, they, they enroll to a, a BA culture, childhood, and, childhood culture and education. It's a basically an educational studies um, program. It follows, it has different routes through students who have an interest in psychology, sociology of education, history of education, literacy, teaching and learning, and so on. Research methods has a relatively small place in this. We have, we have one module, which is 300, sorry, 30 hours of teaching, and that's for research methods. That's everything from research questions through to design to analysis and to interpretation. So it's a, it's a very small part of the curriculum, and, and arguably it's a part of the curriculum that's not considered to be particularly important. Even though we're a very research active school and we're very encouraged to. Um, embed research into our teaching. It's often the case that many colleagues are also don't really engage in this sorts of data as well. Um, I would say that generally speaking, with the exception of those who work with some of the large cohort studies or with people attain up data, I mean education is, is a field that's not really characterised by its own use of, of secondary data. We have an intake on, on the Chartered Culture and Education of around about 50 undergraduate students a year. They come from a range of different backgrounds majority through the traditional A-levels. Um, again, that's characteristics are much in common with, with John's students. They tend to have done limited mathematics since the age of 16. Um, if they do follow A-levels, it's mainly in arts and humanities. We take a number of students through access to higher education routes, and they will have a very basic engagement with maths, and often, perhaps, they might not have done maths for some time. Um, other sort of students come through sort of diplomas in childcare, and so on. So again, the engagement in numbers does not tend to be paramount. A lot of them, all or not all of them, want to become teachers, primary school teachers. Some of them do go off and do um, research masters and PhD programs, but a large proportion of them want to work with young people in some ways and often within formal education. My aim through my teaching, I, I suppose I have characterised sort of what I do with the three main aims. The first is primarily to get them to engage in numeric data and really to act as consumers of this data so they can see a table of figures or they can read a graph it's at really a very basic level. From then I would hope to engage them in using some form of aggregate data in their own research projects. That may for example by if they're doing some small scale research using existing data to characterise the fields in which they're working. Probably the, 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 the final aim is to actually get them to engage in analysis of um, um, individual level data themselves, and that, that tends to only apply to a relatively small number of students, usually those who are perhaps supervised at dissertation level. And I'm just going to briefly give you a few examples of some of the different activities that um, I, tr I try to do with them. Um, one of them is to try and give them an indication of the vast, the huge amount of secondary data that's out there in the field of education and uh, associated fields. I mean, this is sort of aimed to link in, in with the book, it's really just a portal that gives them access to a range of different um, data sites, both UK, US focused and also international. Um, Similarly with the UK focus, I try to get them to engage quite heavily with some of the administrative data that's collected by the Department for Education um, through UCAS, with Minister Applications to Higher Education, the Higher Education Statistical Agency and so on. Um, also get them to engage with um, the census records using CASWEB, um, the Office of National Statistics using the Nathan Statistics Resource, and then with some of the cohort data and some of the, the regular service data, the, particularly the SDS government uh, data source. So this website really provides just a portal for them in order to access and just for them to explore and see the sorts of data that's available. This is perhaps used more often at postgraduate rather than undergraduate level, where we really tend to be consumed, um, concerned with consuming um, aggregate data. Um, linking also, of course, with the international sources, a lot of the barometer surveys, as well as the um, 
Large scale international surveys have a particular focus on education, such as PISA, PEARLS, TIMS, and so on. Even if it's, for example, looking at the PISA questionnaires and getting them to think about the types of questions that have been asked in some of these large studies, and then thinking about whether they can replicate the approach in, in their own particular um, research projects. As I said, a lot of the focus that I try to place is about placing their own small scale research in, in, the context, in some context. A lot of students, when they come to doing their dissertations, are quite interested in working in a particular school or particular, in a particular um, education setting, and then to use some of the data that's available on the Department for Education sites in order to characterise the environment in which they're working. That may, for example, by using the um, school performance tables or the huge range of data that I'm sure you're familiar with is available through um, sources like the Department for Education. Um, they use the ONS, particularly the name of the statistics site, again to further characterise the field that they're working in. I, I try to get them to look at combining different approaches, to try and use mixed method approaches, maybe looking at large scale patterns in the aggregate data and then moving it to the small scale when they perhaps might do some case study research in a particularly small setting. But that tends to be probably the more successful approach where they're quite happy to engage in the descriptive data um, about the field in which they're going to be working and then they want to go in and talk to people. Uh, I mean that tends to be the main interest of all these particular groups of students is to, to get into the field and speak to students. And really my interest is how I can combine that interest with looking at the data that's out there already and to see whether they can perhaps replicate some of the findings that they may see in the large scale data with their, with their own small scale work. Um, in teaching, I mean, gap finder is, the gap finder is quite a useful um, tool I use with certainly teaching. I teach a course on inequalities in US education and they, I get them to sort of use resources like this to model different patterns, looking at different variables, the relationship between example between education variables and the other sort of social socio-economic variables um, that will follow an individual through the life course and so they can look at the fact that education has a as a reach that goes beyond formal schooling and they use that to monitor patterns of inequalities. I, I just want to give you a few brief examples of activities um, that I have used um, with different groups, with students in groups and also um, individual research projects where they have engaged quite effectively in this data. Um, this study comes actually from a research project that we were asked to do. This is a sort of a um, sort of a heavily anonymized version of a research study we were involved with which looked at um, school segregation within one large urban local authority. And what I did, I replicated um, the data that we were given as researchers and tried to get the students to look at that data and to look at patterns of inequality between schools and really what policy makers could do in order to try and reduce that segregation. It started with sort of a map of the local authority where the schools were identified so they could look at school catchment areas, the structure of the school, the curriculum that was on offer in the school and then alongside a range of different of contextual data on the pupils who attended that school, on the teachers and so they, what they could see is that there were some quite stark inequalities between the types of children who attend particular types of school within that local authority and how, for example, the choices that some children had at 16 in one type of school were very different from the choices that a um, child had in a different type of school. And really they were invited then to produce some policy recommendations on what could be done in order to, and what the local authority could do in order to reduce these inequalities. This worked quite well because it was linked reasonably closely to, to an actual research project. So they, they used the existing data in order to draw patterns to characterize the different schools and then to make an assessment as to whether the provision was equitable. Um, another example, these examples are taken from dissertation research projects. Um, a student was quite interested in the relationship between months of birth and academic attainment. Their initial approach was to go and ask some of their friends at one month they were born um, and ask them how well they did at school. That some of the problems with asking their, their friends at Birmingham the, this, these sorts of questions. I mean, the, the people at the annual school census for England collects individual level data on all young people who maintain and hate schools in England, and that provides their date of birth. So what we did, we applied for permission to use this data um, with help. We cleaned the data just to really pull out the variables that were linked with months of birth, birth some very basic contextual data 
on the school and their attainment. We focused our post-16 only, so she looked at different patterns of um, subjects the students were studying at A level. This is again, these are students who are not engaged in mathematics. Um, so the analysis was very simple. It was a matter of her um, putting the months of birth into quartiles and then doing a simple cross tabulation analysis looking at different variables, including attainment and the month of birth. She analysed 300,000 cases, which is a completely different study from the study she wanted to do originally, which was to go and ask people whether they thought it, it, it made a difference. What happened then was she did follow that up with some small scale research that would actually talk to a few individuals about the patterns. But it was the idea of combining the large scale and then, and then moving down to the small scale. Um, another project, again, is a similar study where the student was interested in looking at whether coming from a large family had any impact on educational chances or other sort of social factors. And so in order to do that, we looked at one cross-sectional way with the British Household Panel Survey. And again, it was a straightforward, simple analysis. Particularly with some of the population data we've used, we, we, I've tried, we don't get too involved in inferential statistics. We don't talk about regression analysis. Again, this is a, a really basic level. But I think the fact that they're engaging in this data and they're seeing you know, the power um, of this data. Um, a final quick example is a student at the moment. She's interested in parental involvement um, in literacy. And so she's going to look at the, um, the most recent PEARLS, Progress International Reading Literacy Study. She'll have a look at the aggregate level data for the UK um, and for similar countries to the UK, and then she will compare that. Um, she'll do a small study of her own using the questionnaires that have been produced by the PEARLS PEARL study, which she will replicate her, her own small scale study. So you, you can see that what, what I try to do with students who, you know, they're, they're keen, they're trying to be keen and engaged students, but they don't have. Um, mathematical background. There isn't room in the curriculum for us to teach statistical techniques at all. As I said, they have 30 hours of research methods training plus the final year dissertation. They can so they don't they tend not to see research methods as being paramount importance. Their focus tends to be on they enjoy psychology, child development, that, that that's sort of their, their area of substantive interest. And so so really that what I'm trying to do is to get them to be aware of this powerful nature of some of this data and to engage with it often at the aggregate level but certainly in the final dissertation to get hold of the data and we with some support there they do some sort of fairly basic analysis with it. This is a very informalized way of doing it. I mean the next step perhaps will be to perhaps bring this all together and to make it a little bit more formalized to see whether we can extend it to other similar education courses elsewhere but really this is just a perspective of what I try to do with you know with a relatively small group of students.